the games of Conquest will be run in accordance with the rules. A very popular guidebook. A is very strict about the rules. You forget one thing, Mr. A. We of the fifth dimension can alter reality any way we like. Today on the Comic Book Report, Bizarro Comics, the Deluxe Edition. Stick around and check it out. Goodbye from Bizarro World, everyone. My name is Dominic, and you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today, frankly, I'm reviewing one of the strangest comic book collections I have ever read. That's right, we're taking a look at DC's Bizarro Comics Deluxe Edition. And if you're interested in picking up your own copy or other collected editions, I highly recommend our channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. You can use my code, the Comic Book Report, at checkout to receive $2 off of your order. Please know if you use my affiliate code or links for a purchase, I will earn a small commission, but it's a great way to support our channel at no additional cost to you. Thank you for considering. Now let's get started with today's review. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The segments in this volume were written and illustrated by various creators, including Chris Duffy, Stephen DeStefano, Gregory Benton, and many more. The segments in this volume were published by DC Comics beginning in 2001. The volume itself collects Bizarro Comics and Bizarro World. And finally, this oversized hardcover comes in at 440 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a brief spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that oversized hardcover edition from DC Comics. Right from the jump, I am absolutely in love with the cover art design for this from the incredible Matt Groening of Simpsons and Futurama fame. I've been nearly a lifelong fan of some of his animated series, so to see his very familiar artistic style gracing the cover, I felt right away this was a collection I wanted to pursue. And, being a Superman fan as well, I was always looking for more Bizarro-based comics. And while Bizarro Superman certainly does feature in this collection, it was quite a bit different than expected. But before we delve further into that, I did want to do one more look at this dust jacket cover, including the interior flaps, just so you can get an appreciation again for all this incredible artwork featured on the dust jacket. Then we'll go ahead and transition to the Under the Dust Jacket hardback book itself, because we have some Under the Dust Jacket artwork on the hardback boards, and I really like that. It's a great added feature, and to have a deluxe edition that's not only oversized, but has some of these little bonuses, like Under the dust jacket artwork a very nice touch an added facet of that under the dust jacket artwork that i do like and you will probably notice is that the art they've chosen is basically the art from the dust jacket but just in reverse so the image we see gracing the back cover of the dust jacket is sort of the front cover of the hardback book itself and vice versa they've removed some of the text but it's essentially the same images and i love that it's this mirrored backwards version it absolutely fits this whole bizarro backwards sort of motif very cool stylish and i liked the choice I love that we live in an age where we're seeing more and more of this Under the Dust Jacket artwork, really popular in any real hardcover comic book collection these days, it feels like. I am worried it's spoiling me, because if I find a collection now without it, I'm just like, whoa, taken aback. Taking a quick look at the binding now, you can see it is a glued binding. No real complaints here overall, but would have preferred a sewn binding myself. Anyway, just wanted to give you a look at that. Okay, and with that, we can jump into the collection itself. This is Bizarro World Comics, collecting Bizarro Comics and Bizarro World, which my understanding were two separate compilations of these books here. And how do I describe this book? There is a very, very loose frame narrative that sets up and kind of establishes what we're going to see in the Bizarro Comics. And from there, it kind of goes into a random stream of little vignettes, these little almost like newspaper comic-like stories that have just these absurd premises most of the time. They explore a lot of different characters from throughout the DC Universe, both central characters and very obscure like tertiary 
level characters, and it's a really interesting kind of book. I think to start, let me establish that frame narrative that we're given. Essentially, the story follows Mr. Mixelplix. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. I don't know. Anyway, he's like this fifth-dimensional imp-like character who's known to be a villain of Superman who, when he shows up in our dimension, can cause all sorts of reality-bending mischief, and the only way to get rid of him is to get him to say his own name backwards, which Superman does on occasion. Mr. Mixelplix is a super-powered being and a really fascinating villain. Him and Bizarro Superman are some of my favorite random Superman villains, so to have them paired up for this adventure... I really liked it, I was hooked at the idea, and I really wanted to give this collection a shot. Basically, in the story, Mr. Mixelplix is in the fifth dimension, he kind of proclaims himself basically the ruler, only to have this other entity from some higher dimension show up and challenge him to these kind of sets of games. The games will determine sort of the fate of their dimensions, and basically Mixie gets a bit trapped by this being. He has to agree to these terms, and instead of going, he decides he's going to find himself a champion to help compete in these games. He reluctantly realizes maybe his best hope is to pick Superman. He actually goes to Superman for help, but there's a misunderstanding, or his pride gets in the way, or Superman kind of brushes him off. At any rate, he kind of goes and tries to find another superhero and stumbles into Bizarro Superman. He doesn't want to pick him because Bizarro is sort of a drooling, ape-like character in this rendition who seems pretty mindless and absurd and just not in his right mind. However, Bizarro follows him and this being from that further plane basically says, oh, you've selected your champion. Mr. Mixelplix is alarmed and scared and he's trying to get an idea of what's going on in Bizarro's head. And from there, we're kind of given Bizarro's renderings of all of these DC comics. And so from that point, we see a bunch of these little vignettes. We have stories that follow Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman or Supergirl, but also like the Challengers of the Unknown and Metal Men and some of these other characters I, I barely even know about. At any rate, with no real sense of uh, continuity or cohesion, we're basically from that point given this these little vignettes, like I said, they can be anywhere from one page to maybe like five or six, but there's these little short stories. Almost each of them are a different author, a different illustrator, a different creative team, and we just get to go from one to the next to the next to the next, and the styles are so different, the narrative voice is so different, the subject matter and characters and basically Everything is just a grab bag of miscellaneous randomness. And while that's not without its appeal, because of that, we have a true just variety as far as quality is concerned on the content in this book. Some of these little stories I felt to be very fun, amazing, poignant. They kind of would make me in an absurd way look at these characters in new ways or make me laugh or, you know, just different things that they would kind of satirize or point, point fun at. And again, I think that there were varying ranges of effectiveness for me as the reader. I felt myself enjoying maybe two out of every five stories we were given on average, and it was just a total jumbling of these stories. And eventually we do go back to the story with Bizarro and Mr. Mixelplix. In that universe, we have Superman realizing that there might have been a real threat. So him and the Justice League try to get into the fifth dimension, find Mr. Mixelplix, and help them save their realities. Uh, while that's going on, Mr. Mixelplix is trying to face this other extra-dimensional being named A, trying to stop him, only to eventually get uh, kind of sent into a penalty box for all of his misdeeds, and Bizarro's kind of drafted to step up to the plate, but because he's so out there, he actually ends up winning, succeeding in the games. At any rate, eventually this frame narrative does play out, the day is kind of saved, and we ultimately have Bizarro kind of musing again, and that kicks off the next sequence of vignettes and short stories. I presume that one of these was probably Bizarro Comics, the other was probably Bizarro World as far as the collections, and then from there, like I said, we just go into much more of these random vignettes, and the back half of the collection has even less structure if that's possible. This whole collection itself ends on just kind of a random story Story. Like any one of the stories, it just ends. There's not really any extras at the back. We do have an introduction, but that's really it. You know, they did some special art pages kind of 
strewn throughout in the side of the book itself, but this collection really doesn't have any extras, and ultimately the book kind of left me feeling a bit hollow at the end. I think its narrative peaked right around the middle, and I found the back half overall, the stories, to be in a diminished quality compared to the front half of the book. But that being said, the early stories, as random as they were, there were a ton of notable ones that I had a ton of fun with, and I actually felt like the frame narrative with Mr. Mixelplix, Bizarro Superman, this other extra-dimensional being A, and members of the Justice League, I found that story to be really fun, and I wish they would have pursued it a little bit more, I wish they would have flushed it out, or if not that, I wish it had kind of an end wraparound at the end of this entire collection, rather than feeling we got the end of that frame narrative right in the middle so that when the collection of this entire book this entire deluxe edition ends it just ends really abruptly and that's just the end it wasn't even padded with extras so it was a pretty jarring end of the collection if i could say so myself so that's basically the overall structure and storyline if there is one for this book switching a bit to the art quality again because it was so varied it's almost hard to review a book like this but overall i think art is really the selling point of this book Book. Far more than the narratives were given, the showcasing of the different artistic talent throughout was a pure joy. We do have glossy print paper stock, it's a beautiful, well made collection, and I think seeing this oversized artwork again, it's just stunning. And to see some of my favorite DC characters and a handful of obscure ones I've barely heard of rendered in all of these different styles and ways was a ton of fun. I think that this is such a rewarding book for longtime fans of the DC. DC Universe as it pokes fun as itself and we can see all these characters in new lights and I think that that's a great great facet of this book. Unfortunately, Matt Groening, I believe, only contributed to that cover art. I wish we would have gotten a short from him as far as the illustrations, but I believe it's just that cover. After that, the art throughout is, I would say, overall, the quality is very cartoony. Like, very, very animated, very uh, frantic and funny. Again, it's hard to do a broad strokes brush as the art style varies so much. But overall, I would say the quality is very cartoony animated zany some of them are done more uh, pen and ink or gritty or you know some of them are more conventional but even its conventionality is maybe a little suspect you know some of the lines maybe looked a little polished or it just has this quality like i'm watching or reading a cartoon um, there is also this kind of newspaper comic-like quality to me. I don't really know how to describe this other than I read a lot of comics from the Sunday newspaper growing up, and I feel like there's a lot of artists and art styles represented in that that I could see paralleled in this collection. It's also a very, very standard kind of panel layout for most of this collection, so you're feeling like you're reading an old-school comic that you'd find in the comic strip, which I think works really well, again, for that part of the frame narrative that these are Bizarro's renditions of DC Comics. You know, he's kind of crudely making them himself, presumably, or in his mind. And I really like that. I think that it's believable in that way. I think another thing the art style evokes in my mind is a lot of kind of alternative or indie comics that I've maybe read or dabbled with in my history. This doesn't feel like a mainstream DC book. This feels like they got creators from all over the place to essentially take a grab bag of their ideas, throw everything at the wall, and just kind of see what sticks. And I really like the kind of zany quality to that in a way because we get some really outlandish and just interesting like little stories or vignettes. Um, but it can be a bit tiring when you're reading a collection this size. I don't know if it's because I basically binge read this or read this across just a few evenings rather than spacing this out. My feeling on this collection would be if you're an art lover and a lover of the general DC universe at large, this could be a really fun kind of satirical book to own. I think that the art, again, is probably its selling point, but I would recommend just taking little bits of it every so often. This is a book you could absolutely read one story, put back on your shelf, and revisit in a few days or a few weeks, kind of when you thought of it. And if you like consuming content and comic books like that, this could absolutely be a book for you. But I think if you're trying to read it cover to cover, to read it, get through it, 
it can be a bit of a chore because there is so much content in here. There is so many stories. Luckily, we are treated to a table of contents, which was absolutely a necessary and nice touch. We can see which creators are attached to which work, which might be essential as you index this if you ever choose to uh, reread it, revisit. But reading it cover to cover is definitely something of an effort i think again there were stories that i really enjoyed but maybe not enough to make this an absolutely incredible always revisiting kind of classic collection i would have loved to see more with bizarro frankly he was in the again the frame narratives and he was kind of sprinkled throughout a couple of the stories but this isn't really a bizarro story these are just weird zany misadventures realized within kind of the dc universe or kind of an absurd version of the dc universe um, and I think you just kind of have to take it for what it is. I think if you know that that is what you're getting going in, again, this collection might be a lot more palatable because there is a lot of fun here. Like I said, there are moments that made me laugh, made me chuckle, made me smirk. And we do have an impressive array of creators. I love the kind of anthology sort of format of this in some ways, um, but it's a lot. And again, I would have preferred kind of an end framing at the end of the collection. I would have loved to see maybe more bonus features. The introduction does kind of set the stage for what you're about to read, but I'm surprised we didn't get an epilogue. We didn't get more sketches. We didn't get things like that. I think that that material I would hope would exist for a collection this large, but we just don't see it in this collection. Uh, but again, for art lovers, I think that that is maybe the biggest selling point again, because the narrative I found to be lacking. Uh, there are quite a few stories that follow Batman, which I particularly enjoyed. They kind of explored different levels of his kind of arguable psychosis or, you know, issues, things like that. There were a couple that really just made fun of Aquaman that I thought were a ton of fun. And there was just a lot of good miscellany. And I think some weren't even meant to be really funny. They were meant to be kind of just slice of life in the middle of nowhere. Like there's this one where Supergirl meets up with, I think, Mary Marvel, who's not used her powers in several years. And it's basically just two girlfriends catching up at a cafe. But they just happen to be superheroes or once superheroes. And it's just kind of this beautiful slice of life story. And so every so often you have stories like that too that almost aren't meant to be funny. They're just kind of these little beautiful, DC vignettes so it really is just a grab bag and it's really interesting because you're bouncing from one story to another without any real feeling of transition or bridge or much of anything you're just kind of pinballing from one story to the next there were a couple really affecting stories, like another one of those kind of slice of life, more serious ones, is there's this one that's kind of, you get all these still panels of these different kind of beautiful, just everyday life shots, and you have this narration about looking at the world through a particular lens, and it's really kind of almost poetic and beautiful, and at the end you find out that it's the Flash, and it's this idea that he's kind of meditating on his own almost loneliness, because he's going at such high speeds that everything almost can stand still and he's the only one that gets to witness it in this way and again it's just kind of beautiful i don't know if it's meant to be that but that's certainly the impression i got and to have that sandwich next to you know batman taking on a monkey as a partner you know it's just kind of a weird feeling when you read all these stories back to back to back it can be jarring it can be very whiplashy um but i think it works in some ways again i think that this is one you could savor and just read a little bit at a time and really enjoy especially Especially if you like kind of little tongue-in-cheek humor, little witticisms, a lot of satire, and just generally enjoy the characters of this universe. Um, I think that there's a lot to love. I think also for big, like, long-term animation fans and just fans of comic book art throughout the decades and generations, there is a lot of homage and love put into the collection. And like I said, there's a lot of creators in here. And there are some moments that this really just does shine. But I think as far as my review and my thoughts, I don't know if it shined enough to justify uh, really loving this collection as much as I maybe hoped, especially when I saw the dust jacket artwork and I knew it showcased some of my favorite characters. I just wanted a little bit something more. And I'm interested because I didn't read this in the format it initially came out in. I would be so fascinated to hear of others who have read this collection. I haven't talked to anyone who's read this yet, so I'm super open to feedback. Maybe you got a much different feeling from this. 
this. These are just my impressions. And like I said, there is a lot to love here as far as the art goes and some of the vignettes qualities. I even really like the setup and frame narrative with Mr. Mixelplix and Bizarro Superman. Um, but I think I was just hoping for more. I think that there were more misses than hits in the stories for me. Uh, even though I just love turning the page and seeing all the artwork, I found that at a certain point, if the narrative didn't hook me throughout it, there were points where I felt like reading this was a bit laborious. There is a lot more you could say about this collection, but there's really so much topically to cover that I would just leave it for you to read for yourselves. Like I said, there are a lot of fun stories throughout it, but overall it missed more than it hit for me personally. But I think that this still will have a fan base out there. I certainly think there's a lot of people that probably would would and do love a collection like this, or even this collection specifically. Um, but yeah, I'm leaving just kind of feeling like, wow, that was interesting, the ending was abrupt, and I think I hoped for a bit more. But even with all that considered, I can honestly say it was still a great experience to see some of my favorite DC characters depicted in a truly unique way. And as we finish out the collection itself, all that's left is to give Bizarro Comics a grade. For one of the most truly chaotic yet creative anthology comic series I have ever read, the Comic Book Report has to give Bizarro Comics, the Deluxe Edition, from DC Comics, a C-. This is definitely a below average collection for me personally. While there were shining moments and truly great stories within the contents of these pages, there wasn't enough to offset some of the middle of the road collections for me. I do think that this is an art piece and absolutely wonderful to behold in that oversized edition. I love the paper stock with that glossy print. Love the dust jacket and cover design, but overall, I wish more of the stories hit for me. I wish we got a better end to that frame narrative, and I would have loved to see some extras at the back of this collection. But it still had its moments, and honestly, it's one of the most fascinating Superman-based reads I've ever read. Let me know what you think. I'm super curious if you've read this. And until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, hello.